and welcome to Veggie Bites, the show where you will learn how to cook delicious and hearty vegetarian meals that all of your friends will enjoy. I'm your host, Melissa, and today I'm taking you to Paris. We'll be making French bread, a green bean salad, and cheese fondue. See you in a minute. Welcome back. So the first thing that we're going to start out with today is our French bread. And the reason for that is because it takes a long time to make. It only takes about 20 minutes in the oven, but it needs to rise. Now you can't have anything about Paris without having something about bread. Everywhere you go in Paris, there's bakeries. When I was studying abroad in London, we had a week off at the end of October and my friends and I decided to go to Paris for four days and it was an amazing four days filled with a ton of carbohydrates, which you have to give yourself that excuse if you're in Paris. Um, one of our favorite bakeries was this uh, bakery that had a blue outside in Saint-Michel, and um, I think it was just called like the bakery, or um, it didn't have any, any, any special name, but I think in French it was just called the bakery, and it was just open, and from right outside, once you got outside the metro, you could start smelling the spread. It was like almost across the street from where you got out of the metro, and we were like literally drawn to it. We had a tour that morning and our tour was meeting uh, outside the Metro on Saint Michel and we could not, not stop at this bakery. It was amazing. So I was really inspired to make bread. I've never made bread before and it came out pretty good. So now I'm gonna share this recipe with you guys. And I got the recipe um, from allrecipes.com. I'm not a baker. So after the episode, I'll link that, um, I'll link the recipe on my blogs to give that person credit. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to add warm water into a bowl. I have a glass bowl just because the water's warm. And then we're gonna add some active dry yeast and it's a, uh, one fourth of an ounce in, in this packet. And the reason why it comes in packets is because yeast, like it says, it's active, it's live. And when we put it in the oven, the yeast is killed and it leaves these beautiful air bubbles that makes the bread very nice and fluffy. So we're gonna add this and it's important to add it to warm water so that it dissolves a bit. Now, what I would do for the warm water and what I did is I um, boiled some water on the stove and then I let that water sit to cool down. You want your water to be about 110 degrees. So you're definitely gonna need it to be warm. Okay, so then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to add a, a cup of bread, um, a cup of flour for now. You can use all-purpose flour. There's different kinds of flours for making bread. I just use all-purpose flour, it's not a problem. And a tip when, when using flour and working with it is to keep a plastic bag at the bottom because a lot of flour will drop out from uh, the bottom of the container just because it's usually paper. And then you'll have flour all over your, your cabinet to recoup your baking stuff. So just leave it inside of a plastic bag and you'll be good. So for right now, we're just gonna get a cup of flour and you don't need to sift it or anything. Um, just make sure that we have a cup here. All right. And we're going to also add about a little less than a teaspoon of salt. And the salt really comes out even though we're only adding a little bit less than a teaspoon of it. A little goes a long way. So now we have everything in here, and ideally you would use a bread maker or you would use um, a standing like hand blender that has a bread hook. Unfortunately, since I'm not a baker and I don't, I don't bake bread that often, but I'm going to start, I don't have a bread hook. So we just have a regular hand blender here. So in a minute, we're gonna add a bit more flour. If we added all the flour in now, it would be a horrible mess because this hand blender, it, the, the dough, it would just never get out of it. So we're gonna blend this just for a few seconds to make sure everything's combined. And then with our wooden spoon, we're gonna add about a cup and a half more flour. So we're just gonna blend on a low, on a low setting. if we had blended this whole thing with all the flour, all the dough would be all the way up. It would be impossible to get off. But if you're really interested in baking bread, um, I would definitely suggest purchasing a dough hook for your hand blender. And I just want to get all this off here because the yeast is really important and I don't want to lose any bit of it. So what we're going to do with this bread to make it truly French bread is kneading it. And we're gonna do that in just a minute after we add the rest of the flour. So I'm just gonna set this aside. <clears throat> so 
So now um, we're going to add about a cup and a half more flour. And the recipe I found online <clears throat> calls for six cups of flour. Um, and that's because it's to make two really large loaves. And um, I didn't want to make two really large loaves, but you definitely can. So if you want to make it for a larger crowd, I will definitely link you guys to that recipe. So now we're just going to use a wooden spoon for this and mix everything in. And the most amazing thing about making your own bread is that it really smells, this sounds crazy, but it really smells like bread. And it's such a reward, it's such a rewarding experience um, to make it yourself because you've probably seen like um, in bakeries and things like that, people making bread before. And now you get to make it yourself. And it's a long process just because you're waiting for the dough to rise, but it's an easy one. All right, so we add in a cup, so now we're going to add about an additional half cup. And don't worry if not everything, um, not everything comes together right now. And don't add any more water. We're only adding one cup of that warm 100 degree about water. Um, because in a minute, we're going to knead everything together. So any, any remaining flour, we're just going to sprinkle onto our baking sheet. And, and we're just going to knead everything together. And it smells fantastic already. And trust me, it'll be so worth it once your entire house or your entire apartment smells like fresh break, baked bread. It's great. All right, I think that's about all I can get. So now you just need any cookie sheet, baking sheet. I like this one because it's flat and it has like these flat edges just in case anything goes over. <clears throat> so now I've had this uh, stick of butter sitting out for a while, for about an hour or so. So now it's nice and soft. And we're just going to rub it on our cookie sheet, just so nothing sticks. And the bread's going to be sitting on here for a while, while it rises and, and things. So we're just going to make sure that butter's on there really nice. And now we're going to take some of the flour that was in here that didn't combine. And we're just going to sprinkle it on. <clears throat> and make sure to get some flour on your hands as well or else everything's gonna stick to you. It can get a little messy, but it's definitely fun. This is also a really great activity, I think, to do with kids if you babysit, just because it involves so few ingredients. And the, like I said, the oven time's only 20 minutes, so the kids could be helping out the entire time. If you're babysitting, put on a movie, make some bread, you can even put, um, some like kid-friendly ingredients inside of it. You could add some like chocolate chips and make rolls out of this. But today we're, we're making some French bread. All right, so right now we wanna knead it. Now the purpose of kneading bread is we wanna stretch it out. It stretches out the proteins and forms gluten. And the gluten is what's gonna make it nice and fluffy. And if you don't stretch it out enough, um, it, it just won't, it'll be really dense and hard and that's not what we want. I forgot to take my ring off, so I'm gonna do that now before I get all in there. All right, so the way that we knead is we have our, our dough in the middle of our baking pan. And basically what you want to do is you want to pull out and fold over. And you don't want to tear it. You just want to pull out and fold over. And so right now, you're going to want to do this for about 8 to 10 minutes. And it might get really annoying, so maybe switch off with your friends. Uh, it's great if you're, if you're having like a party or something for kids to have each kid make their own little roll. That would be really fun. It would keep the kids busy. Um, so we're just going to knead this, which is such an important step. We're going to do it for about 8 to 10 minutes, like I said. So I'll knead it and see you back here in a second. <laughs> 